Once again, good afternoon. My name is Mariana Hernandez. I'm the Assistant Program Manager of Workforce Development at LA County's Economic Development Corporation. And today we're here for the Television Academy Foundation's internship program. So thank you all for joining us. I am part of a team of three with Jose Pelayo on the call. Jose, if you'd like to say hi. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Jose Pelayo. I'm the program manager. Just want to tell you guys, um, take advantage of the great presentation that you're going to hear and ask many questions. As Mariana mentioned, if you have the opportunity to get on camera, please do so because it's always great to see who we're speaking to. Uh, but thank you again. Thank you, Jose. And so we are also, um, again, we form a part of a team of three with Jermaine Hampton, our senior director, who is not on the call, but um, he is also part of our team. Um, and these types of webinars are brought about through a partnership that we have with the Los Angeles uh, Community College. And there's about 19 of those colleges. So thank you all for joining us. Um, again, we do these types of webinars around career awareness, internship opportunities, um, employment opportunities, and we have events for faculty as well um, to enhance the curriculum that you are taught in the classroom. If you'd like to learn more about our partnership or the work that we've been doing in the past, you can visit the website on your screen, and we will be sharing a link to the recording so you will have access to these um, slides there as well. At the end of the presentation, we'll go ahead and have a feedback poll. It's a quick three minute question um, that you can take advantage of just so that we know whether this was something useful to you and if you'd like to learn more about these types of webinars. So with that, I'll go ahead and pass it over to our presenter today, um, Nancy Robinson from the Television Academy Foundation. Nancy, thank you again so much for presenting this wonderful opportunity to the students. Well, thank you very much for having me. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see all of your faces and those of you I can't see. I totally understand um, as well, but thank you for being here. Um, again, I'm Nancy Robinson. I'm Director of Education Programs for the Television Academy Foundation. And for those of you who don't know who we are, um, we are a membership organization. The Television Academy is made up of the industry professionals who vote for the coveted Emmy Award this being her. So I'm sure you guys have all watched um, the Emmy Awards. This is a real Emmy that I did not win. It is a prop Emmy that I keep on my desk and it's super heavy and the points are super sharp. So I do travel around to college campuses and bring her with me. So many a student has had the opportunity to say, I'd like to thank the Academy. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of a fun thing that we do. Um, but anyways, I'm here today because I wanted to tell you all about our great internship program. And I know that many of you on the call today are possibly seniors. So if you are a graduating senior, um, then unfortunately you would not be eligible for our fall internship program, which I am going to talk about. Um, but you would be potentially eligible for our college television awards competition, which I will also mention. So please make sure that you stay on the call. Um, I will just tell you a little bit about myself. I grew up in the Los Angeles area. I am what you would call an industry brat in that my father directed television commercials back in the 70s, way before there was any kind of advertising other than on television, watching television commercials. Um, my mom was a teacher who, when my brothers and I were all in college at the same time, um, she had been a stay-at-home mom for a long time and decided to go back to work and started a career as a casting assistant. And because she was interested, interested in people and what makes them tick. And her casting assistant job turned into a casting director job, which then led her to become a talent agent at one of the top talent agencies in Los Angeles. So with that being said, my I have a cousin who's a producer, another cousin who's an art director. So I was been around the industry my whole life. I thought, all right, cool. I'm going to I'm going to, you know, major, I went to UC San Diego, I'm going to major in, in media production, visual arts, and I'm going to go in the, in, into the industry. I wanted to be an editor, wanted to be a casting director, all these different things. But even though I had the connections to do that, I also wanted to prove to myself that I could do it on my own, that I could be scrappy and try not to use connections and, you know, prove to myself that I could get a job and not be that Nepo baby that we're all hearing about now. So, after I graduated from school, I did 
whatever I could to stay in San Diego working in the industry. So I worked on industrial videos that were happening down there. I found any kind of temporary job through a temp agency that might have anything to do with the industry. So I worked as a receptionist in an advertising agency. That led to my first job down in San Diego, really working full-time in the industry as a talent agent for an agency that was just starting out in San Diego, representing um, young emerging talent and models. So I did that for a short time. But I realized, as many college students do, and this might happen to you as well, but the day that I walked across campus ready to, you know, get ready for graduation the next day, I thought to myself, why didn't I study early childhood development? Because I'm really interested in helping students, helping children, helping people. So I did go back to um, Moore Park Community College, which is out in my neck of the woods, and I took four classes, which along with my bachelor's degree, I then was able to um, use these four classes I took in early childhood development to get a certificate to teach preschool. So I did that for about seven years. And I realized too, that all of you on the call today, all of us, we were once preschoolers. Now we're just grown up versions of those children that we used to be. And it's still what I do and I'm passionate about is to help give back and tr try to provide opportunities for people who might not have that opportunity anywhere else because they don't know anybody in the business, right? So how do you get into the entertainment industry? First thing is obviously who you know, super important. Second thing, internships, right? So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna tell you guys about our great fall opportunities. Give me just a second here. Okay, can everybody? Everybody, hold on, let me make this bigger. Everyone see my screen? Okay, cool. So again, we are the Television Academy Foundation and in the, we have internships in fall, spring and summer. So all season long, our fall and spring opportunities are part-time and they are only for students going to school within the Los Angeles County. So during those times, you're only competing against your colleagues your peers that are also attending school within the five greater Los Angeles area counties or semester in LA programs. Our summer program is nationwide. That's when you're competing with everybody across the country, but there are a lot more opportunities for those full-time summer internships. So this, um, this next slide tells you a little bit about who we are. Um, again, our our membership organization is made up of the writers, producers, directors, costume designers, special visual effects, makeup artists, um, pretty much everything that I saw coming through the chat that you guys were mentioning in terms of what you're um, studying, we actually do have opportunities for during our summer internship. So we are really here. It's our passion within the foundation to help support engage and educate the next generation of industry professionals, which are you. So again, you can see that what's coming up for us now in the fall is we have launched and opened our platform to begin accepting applications for the fall cycle. We opened up on April 27th and will be open until May 18th. So I really suggest you guys will see our website at the end of this presentation. But if you do go to televisionacademy.com slash foundation, you will find out more about all of our great education programs and how to apply. So um, for fall, we have part-time paid 13-week internships all in Los Angeles. We are going to have placement of 10 interns in five areas of the industry. And all of our applications are judged by our TV Academy members. So the same voting members who select the Emmy nominees and the Emmy winners are the same people that review all of our student materials and applications and select our finalists. So this list right here gives you an idea of the categories that we are offering for summer. This was for summer 2023 when students applied. This entire list of categories were available to those students. Um, they will also be included next year, um, next summer. The highlighted categories are our categories for fall. 
So if you're applying for agency, you could potentially be working in either a talent agency or a literary agency or even a below the line agency where you're working with cinematographers, uh, writers, producers. Um, obviously, we just are in day two of a writer strike. So um, that yet remains to be seen how that's going to play out. But um, to the best of my knowledge at this moment, um, agency definitely in the below the line areas um, is still moving forward because we also have a very rich unscripted community, unscripted television, which is not on strike. We also are offering children's development, scripted development, editing, and production management. So these are the five opportunities for fall. You do need to be a student in the fall when you do have this internship. So when you go to apply, you'll see what is required um, to submit, but we do work around your school schedule. So while you're applying for an internship through the Television Academy Foundation, you are actually working out in the industry. So um, we internally vet the applications, our members review and select the finalists, but then it's the hosting company who selects the winner. So for example, production management for spring right now, that intern is actually working on The Bachelorette. So that's my reality guilty pleasure that I watch, but um, she's having a great experience over there, um, learning a lot and working with the Warner Brothers team. So these are our categories for fall. Ooh, hold on, I hit the wrong thing. Sorry guys. Uh, let me go. That, that. That. Okay, so here's our application cycles. So you can see when we open and when we close. Again, we are open now, accepting applications for fall. So um, definitely you'll wanna visit our website, take a look at the requirements and get those applications in. Um, the internships will start in September after Labor Day and they run for 13 consecutive weeks. So they end the very beginning of December. What you need to apply. Okay, so here's, here's the fun part. So everybody has to submit a professional statement. Now that professional statement is um, 350 to 400 words, I believe, but it does state that on the website. But this is really where you have an opportunity to talk about yourself. What makes you unique? Why are you so passionate about the category that you are applying for? Now you can only apply to one category. So you've got to really literally put your eggs in one basket. You can be looking at development scripted, and you could be looking at agency, and you have to decide which one you want to go for. But whatever category you're picking, you want to write that professional statement to support that choice. So if you grew up watching television with your grandparents, or you know you have a particular memory of a certain episode of a certain show that really resonated with you, this is where you get the chance to talk about that. And that's sort of like when you apply to school and you have to submit an essay um, this really is where you really get to shine and you get to give the viewers, if you will, the opportunity to see and to read you and see who you are. Your resume. Now, your resume, we don't expect you to have a lot of industry experience, your students, um, but we do want to know what do you do with your, you know, what do you do in your spare time? Do you have a part time job? I tell students all the time that the skill sets that you're doing are so transferable. So you could be working as a barista at Starbucks and you know that you've got to have, or hope that you have good um, you know, interpersonal skills, that you pay attention to detail, quick on your feet, um, you know, kind of think about all that because a lot of times students say, well, I don't know, you know, I, I deliver newspapers. Okay, well, there's, that's great. So what could you, what, what might that do? What are you doing there that could parlay into another kind of internship experience that you want to have? And I guarantee you, they are transferable skills. You have to have a letter of recommendation, which needs to be from somebody who knows you in an advisory capacity. So oftentimes, for the most part, it's an academic, it's a faculty person that knows you or a career advisor, somebody who can speak to your work ethic and knows you as either a student or as an employee. Um, your transcripts, these are unofficial transcripts. We want to know about your college career. We're not looking at your grades. We want to know what courses you've had. So if you're applying for an editing internship and you have not had a single editing class, does that mean you're not going to get the editing internship? 
not necessarily, but it means that you are going to have to somewhere in your application um, show why you are the, the qualified person for that uh, category. And I mentioned editing because we do have some ancillary materials that are required in certain categories. Like if you apply for script writing in the summer or you're applying for directing or cinematography, costume design, art direction, animation, you're going to have to have a visual, something that you turn in so that the judges can see your work, see what you've done. And that is the supplemental materials. So those are the additional materials where applicable. And those are really, like I said, for the creative categories, art direction, costume design, writing, directing, et cetera. So here are some testimonials from some of our interns. Again, during the summertime, we have so many different opportunities and students are really working across um, genres across different areas of the industry, having opportunities. Some of them are on set. Some of them are in offices. Now that we are in this coming out of COVID world, a lot of experiences are more hybrid. A lot of people are in the office, you know, maybe two to three days a week and then working remotely the other days. But um, you can kind of take a look here that you know, we've got interns working behind the scenes in a newsroom, um, working on set shadowing directors and cinematographers, working in post houses, learning how to you know, schedule and budget when you're working in production management. So if you visit our website, which again, you will see at the end, and if um, anyone, Mariana, if you wanna put it in the chat for everybody, that would be awesome, or Jose. Um, but if you look at our programs and you also, there is an alumni tab on our website and you can click on that to see where our interns have come from over the years, what schools, you will see some of your schools pop up, up there for sure. And you'll also see the categories that we've offered. And it's really exciting to see who some of our notable alumni are, which you will also see here in just a second. Um, during the summer, we do have opportunities specifically for students that are studying unscripted or are interested in unscripted television. This is our Getting Real internship program. Really exciting. I'm gonna show you guys a brief little sizzle reel about this. I'm sure you'll be very familiar with a lot of the programming that you're going to see. And right now with the writer strike, this is the big boom for unscripted television. So I think we're gonna see a lot more. So take a look. There's no sound. Oh, yikes. Can you, you hear might, anything? No, Nancy. I think you might have to um, unshare, you, yeah. unshare and then reshare. And then when you are selecting the screen, there's a little uh, checkbox at the bottom left. Okay. Um, that says share sound. All right, so let me share screen again. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, there we go. Share sound. Oh, thank you. See? Awesome. You. Start this over. Thank you. Okay. Now tell me if you guys can hear it. Yes. Yes. That's right. It's Lizzo. I feel like Unscripted is a really exciting place to work in because literally the options are limitless. Like you can go any direction. There's so many different combinations of things that you can try. I think what makes it exciting to work in reality TV is that you're meeting like real people, people who you could meet on the street and it kind of reinforces the idea that everyone has a story. Unscripted, there's always like something different every time you go into the workplace, something new to experience. You really have to learn how to adapt to your environment because every day is, it's a new day. <laughs> Nothing is ever the same. The Getting Real internship program is an amazing opportunity for young people to get access into this industry. Because it's specifically targeted towards students from underrepresented communities who just traditionally haven't had um, a pathway in. And so we wanted to create that opportunity by creating an internship program that would not only bring them in, but also communicate to them the possibilities of careers in television. 
our interns are assigned to the development department. They'll be given assignments including casting, research, writing. They can even pitch ideas if they'd like. They'll be able to pick up a camera, they'll be able to tell their story, show to the world kind of what they find interesting and I think that's an exciting opportunity. I learned what a contact sheet is, how to outreach to people. Making spreadsheets with them, which I found out is one of my favorite things to do. And also I got the opportunity to learn Photoshop for the first time. From the beginning, it was just constant acceptance, constant, what do you bring to the table? Oh, you know what? Let me help you bring more. Let me help you grow and thrive, regardless of what you don't know, because you're here to work with us. These interns are paid. And so we really look at them like we look at any employee. They're not just getting coffee, they're actually participating in the process. We want them to be exposed to how it really is to develop television shows. Not only am I Latino, but I'm also transgender, and I have not seen anybody like me in the industry. There just needs to be more representation because when there's more stories, you're gonna look at the TV and be like, hey, I can be like that person, but also behind the screen. This business is not a business that's gonna come find you. You have to go find it. Applying for getting real is that first step. So with this internship program, I for sure was able to try out a lot of different positions and I was able to learn a lot of different things that are gonna be major for me to move up in this industry. I like to say my internship experience was life changing, but everything that has happened this past year for me is like thanks to the Television Academy Foundation internship. And I know that's crazy, but like it's true, so. <laughs>Getting Real internship program. And again, this takes place during the summertime only and is while our program is nationwide, only students within the five greater Los Angeles area counties are eligible to apply for this particular opportunity, which I cannot stress enough. I guarantee you there's not one person on this call today who does not watch some sort of reality television. And the fact that, you know, we are now in a writer's strike and unscripted television is not being affected by that. Um, there are, I just hope that everybody will not close off your minds to thinking that there aren't jobs and there aren't opportunities in unscripted. There are so many opportunities that shadow each other in scripted and unscripted. Those jobs exist in both those genres. So I hope everybody kind of keeps that in mind. Um, okay, moving on, we also have during the summertime um, opportunities for foster youth. Um, this is specifically students who are terming out of the foster care system. And we have um, this year, our opportunity is, um, typically we have three opportunities. Um, this year, because of the strike and such, it's going to affect some of our categories, but we do have an internship, an intern working in scripted development at Shondaland. So um, this is also another really exciting opportunity for students within the greater Los Angeles areas. Here are some of our notable alum. So I think you might recognize some of these shows, possibly some of these names. Um, I have seen quite a few of these people. I've been with the foundation. I'm in my 24th year and I have seen several of these people um, sitting across my desk from me, Caitlin, Marco, Sev, Albert, uh, they were all interns when I have during my tenure here, and I have watched them just move on and shine and become successful, become Emmy nominated, Emmy winning, um, come back and do panel discussions for us. Gina Prince Bythewood, who is so busy, is so generous with her time and has come back and done professional development. Craig Mazin, same thing. I mean, he won the Emmy for Chernobyl working on Last of Us right now, he just participated um, in our programming for our college television awards. So um, got some really great, really, really great people here. Tracy Oliver, Sev, I watched Sev, you know, go on to not only do television, but he's also working in film. So we've got a lot of really, really great, great names. So here's just a few tips for you if you are going to be applying, which I hope all of you are. Um, definitely make sure that you follow up on your recommendation letter with whoever you are getting that from, whoever your referee is. Faculty are asked so often to write letters for students. So you wanna jump on that as quickly as possible to get them to write that letter for you. 
Um, if you have gone to any other colleges or universities or certificate programs other than where you currently are right now, we do need all copies, all unofficial copies of your transcripts. Again, this is for your coursework that you've had, not about your grades. Um, we are sticklers for the word count for your professional statement. If you go five words over, are we going to disqualify you? No. Are you, you go 15 words over, are we going to disqualify you? Yes. So definitely be mindful and make sure that you check that count on your professional statement. Double check your spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Everyone on you know today is an adult and a college student. So um, we want to make sure that you are you're paying attention to all those important details and that you are getting your materials in on time. We do not accept any late materials. And one thing that I do want to stress too is that all of our positions are paid. So I know that. In the Getting Real, John Murray mentioned um, that they're paid internships. All of our internships are paid. Another program I want to tell you all about is our College Television Awards competition. This is for student filmmakers. And when I say filmmakers, obviously we are television, right? But students are producing shorts. So you are, if you are a writer, producer, or director of a student film that you've been working on, I would suggest taking a look at our categories, look at when our applications open on October 2nd. We have an incredible two day, you know, full of professional development, field trips, concluding with a, an award ceremony, a star studded award ceremony where we hand out a college television award trophy. And because we are television and not film, we're asking you if you're, if you're submitting a comedy, we want to know, we don't expect you to produce two more episodes of that comedy, but we want to know conceptually what you think that would look like. So you would be required to turn in a synopsis of what those next two pieces of your piece would look like. So um, that's what makes it more about television. So another little pointer when you're applying for the internship program, two things. Um, if you are wanting to go in, if you want to be an actor, we don't have an acting internship. If you want to be an actor, I always tell students that learning about the business side of the industry is so incredibly important. And oftentimes actors pick either agency or casting because those are the two closest business areas to their craft. Um, but do not mention in your professional statement that you are an actor. You can have a couple things on your resume if you want that might speak to the fact that you do some acting, but casting directors and agents, they don't want to see that someone wants to be an actor. They want to see that you want to be an agent or a casting director. We can secretly know that you really want to be an actor, but we don't want to put that out there because that might that might um, lessen your chances of being selected. So that's, that's a tip right there. And then um, I had another tip that has escaped me, but will come back to me at some point. Okay, so moving on. Here we are, internship program. For more information, there is our email that you can in, you can email intern support at televisionacademy.com. Again, we close for fall on May 18th and our finalists will be notified in early June. The internships start in September. If you are selected as a finalist, you are required to submit an interview video. So we provide the questions. Everyone answers the same questions, but everyone puts themselves on camera answering those questions because that gets sent over to the host company and along with your application packet. And that helps them determine based off of personality and so on and so forth, who the best match would be to work with them for the duration of time for that summer, spring or fall. So that is us. So I am more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, I hope that was helpful and got you guys excited about it, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Nancy. Franco, feel free to unmute and then we'll go over some of the questions that were submitted through the chat. Hi, Nancy. Thank you so much for the presentation. Um, what I would like to know is how many units does one have to be enrolled in in order to participate in your internship program? 
Very good question, Franco. Um, it really depends on how close you are to graduating, to getting your, um, you know, to getting your AA or whatever degree you might be getting, um, or your your bachelor's. I know there's a lot of people with different from different schools here. Um, as long as you are, we do need you to be a full time student at least taking two classes. But if you're graduating and you only have one class left to take in the fall, you're still eligible to apply. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Franco. Dr. Rose? Dr. Rose, if you'd like to unmute, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, everybody. Um, I was interested because I have some international students and I have some vet students and I have um, an older, older students. And these are people that not the international are younger, but they are like in the 40, 30 bracket, 45. Uh, some vets are 50. Do, do you have this opportunity for them or sh should I not waste their time? International students are not eligible to apply. However, um, there is no age limit. So if there's somebody who is an, a student that is enrolled that happens to be um, a little bit more senior, so to speak, they are absolutely eligible. And we are open to undergrad students and graduate students. Thank you, Nancy. Aria? Hi. Um, one of my, so one of my questions was, what is something that you've seen like in terms of portfolios or examples that people, um, interns have like potential interns have submitted that have like caught people's attention or caught, you know, your eye for them to be good candidates or considered to be good candidates for the internship? And this is for more of the creative fields like animation, filmmaking, story writing, stuff like that. So honestly, I think it's really about putting your best work forward, what you're the most proud of. Um, I don't know that there's really one thing. I mean, everyone's work is so unique that if you were applying for animation, depending on whether you were going for hand-drawn or computer-generated, um, you know, you would have to submit a storyboard. So there's different things that are required for different categories. Costume design, for example, you know, there's a portfolio that is um, required and it has certain you know, the pictures have to be a certain size and they want to see certain um, different kind of like genres or like years of periods, period pieces that you might have done. Um, really, it's it's not so much about the extra stuff that you're submitting. It's about that like the professional statement. And again, this is super competitive, like anything that you're going to go for in this life, you know, jobs, you know, anything that you're going to go for. But to me, it's just about being your authentic self and really writing from the heart when you write that professional statement. You know, be that person that you, be the same person that you are, that you show to the world, that you would show to, to your workforce and that you show to your friends. So just be be your true self. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aria. Mia? Hi, are we allowed to submit for multiple um, internships? You can only apply to one category per cycle. However, if you don't get accepted, you can certainly apply for the next round. So if you apply in fall and you, you do get an internship with us, then you're no longer eligible to apply again because our alumni, our interns do become our alumni and our college television award winners. So once you finish your program with us, you're basically stuck with us for life. Like we want to know what you're doing. When you get that first big project, you know, I always say, all right, call your, your parents, your partner, whatever, then you call us because we want to be able to tout your successes, you know, bring you back to do panel discussions to also give back to the next generation. So, gotcha. But you definitely can apply and basically until you are either accepted or you aren't eligible anymore because you've graduated. Okay, and then my follow-up question with um, supplemental materials. Um, if you haven't necessarily like worked on a lot, but you have like concepts or scripts, can that be in place of some supplemental materials? Um, they're pretty specific, the rules about what we ask for, but like if you do apply for the script writing category, you mm -hmm. are required to submit a short scene from a show that's currently on either broadcast TV or streaming. So that would be where, you know, people, 
a lot of times students think, well, I want to apply for writing, but I don't know if my writing is good enough. I mean, that's where you take that leap of faith, but you also have to know that if you are selected as a finalist, then you have to submit a complete original script. Mm -hmm. So that's one of those areas where sometimes if you are younger or newer in your college career, you might want to wait until you've had a little bit more experience under your belt before you go for something like that. Um, a lot of times students who are thinking about script writing but aren't ready yet might apply for development so that they're still around reading scripts, writing coverage, and being mm -hmm. in that world and still being around writers. You're just not actually writing yet. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mia. We'll go ahead and pass it over to Afik. Uh, yes. Hi. Um, I was wondering the rec letters of recommendation, can they be, are they, do they need to be necessarily from our college professors now, or can they be from high school or from other uh, people who we've worked with? And um, that was my question. They don't need to be, if you, you know, I was one of those people too in college, like I didn't know all my professors. Right. So I maybe knew one or two of them and I was in a really big school. Um, it depends on where you are in your career. If you're in your first year, you certainly can go back and get somebody from high school to write you that letter. Uh, if you don't know a faculty person or a career counselor on campus, you can ask an employer to write it for you for sure. Um, and how many letters of recommendation can we submit? Like, let's say, what's the reality of, how, of what you would look at? Just one. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Guadalupe. Uh, yes, uh, good afternoon. Um, my question is, um, are undocumented students eligible to apply for this internship? Students are eligible if you are a U.S. citizen, a permanent resident, or a DACA recipient. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Nicholas. Yes, my question would be for the development internships and the stuff that's going to be scripted um, with the writer's strike and kind of everything going on. Um, do we have any idea of what those type of internships would look like for those interested in applying for them? Um, good question, too. I think a lot of times with the development internships, they're Prop, there are things that they're looking to potentially acquire these production companies so that you would still be reading a lot of books, scripts, doing research. So yes, there would still be work. As far as I know at the moment, I have not been told anything otherwise. Our development internships are moving forward as planned. Um, because again, it could be your assignment could be read this, take this book, read this book, do some coverage. You know, what, what do you think you, in your mind, what would you see us doing with this potential property. So I do not see that being affected as of today. I mean, in three days, will I be able to say that? Uh, that's, who knows? Hopefully the strike will end in three days, but I don't think it's going to. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Nicholas Terrell. Hi. Hi, Nancy. Um, thank you for the informative uh, presentation and thank you to the Academy for the opportunity. Um, my question for you is, um, is it okay to use a letter of recommendation that you received last semester? Um, I would probably, if you, it was last semester, so that would have been a fall semester for a fall internship coming up. I would probably see if I could get another one or if you, if you could get that person that wrote you that letter to update the date and maybe change something if there's anything new that you've done. If it's impossible to get that done, then you can still submit that. But I would try to get somebody to, you know, maybe add a little bit to that if you've taken another class or they've seen you in a different light or, you know, just something along those lines. But otherwise, yes, you can. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Aria? Um, hi, Nancy. Another question. So, mm -hmm. um, it, let's, so I have a lot of varied experience when it comes to design. And I have experience in all kinds of um, types of design within the field itself. So how do we know which one we'd be like the best fit for when it comes to like the different creative fields? So uh, would it just be based on experience? Like if I have more experience in digital design, then I would apply for that versus if I only have two years of experience in animation, I would kind of uh, do design over animation. Is that kind of how we would determine? 
I mean, I think really it depends on what you really want. It's not going to okay. matter based on your, you know, your resume or your transcripts and what it shows. I think it really depends on where, what do you want to do? Like, what's your okay. ultimate career goal? Where do you feel the most confident? If you feel really confident in one area and you want to build your skill set in another, you can mm -hmm. look at it that way. Or you can say, well, I know that I've got the skills, so I'm going to go for the internship in this category where I know that I can shine. Um, so really, it really does come down to what you want to do personally. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aria. Miles? Hi, um, I just wanted to ask, um, so for the College Television Awards, do you need to be an alumni for that? Like to happen in the internship program and then uh, have kind no, of- No, not at all. Mm -mm. College uh, Television Awards is completely different program than the internship program. So you can, you can be both. Like we have interns who have also won College Television Awards and vice versa. So they're okay. two completely separate programs. All right, thank you. And then, um, so I'm in animation. So for my, if I were to submit a portfolio, would the, um, are there any like, would the website give you guidelines for like how long it should be or what types of genres there should be and just stuff like that? Yeah, we would tell you like, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a genre. It would just be what I would suggest to anybody that has questions about more depth of a category is that we've gone pretty in detail on our website. If you look at the summer categories, you can see what was required and that's where animation was. So you can look and see the difference. And you know, I'm learning every day that the difference between computer generated and hand drawn is so so small now because even the hand-drawn stuff is done on computers but there really is like a 3d versus a 2d and you probably know that more than me miles but yeah. i mean i think you know if you go and you look you'll see what was required for the costume design portfolio you'll see how long your you know your reel should be if you're submitting for directing things like that mm -hmm. thanks jose for posting that again all right thank you you're welcome thank you miles Afric. Hi, sorry, I wanted to quickly clarify just um, another question I had regarding the recommendations. So what if my uh, teacher or the person I worked with was from outside of the US? Can I still submit um, a letter of recommendation from him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also, um, so I don't know how like big you said that if it's just my first year of a university and I don't have I don't have the, the connection with my professors yet or I haven't done a, a film class or something like that yet. Um, I also I just sorry <laughs> trying to collect my thoughts. OK, um, so how big of a gap from high school to, to college can I submit it if I don't have um, any rec like professors that I can ask for a recommendation from? in film? Um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be in film. I mean, if you have a professor or somebody that knows you that in a different um, subject, or, you know, that's fine too, or an employer, you know, it's really finding that um, person that could kind of speak to your character. And that, and I'm sure that you'll be able to find that. I mean, definitely submitting that letter. And if you're a first year, just so everyone knows, we do, you can be a freshman or you can be a graduating MFA student, you know, a graduating graduate student, and you can apply anytime during that time. So we do have people that apply in their freshman year and they actually do get selected. Does it happen a lot? Not necessarily, but there are these superstar people who do get selected. So you should definitely give it a try. So you're at least getting in the habit of knowing when to apply for internships, knowing what's required for them. It's always that constant, I should probably update my resume or you know, tweak this or tweak that. So that's that's what I would recommend. Okay, thank you. And you. how many supplemental materials are we allowed to submit? Again, that depends on the category. So if you, they're very specific. So like for editing, I believe it's a two minute reel, directing a two minute reel, costume design might have eight different pages. You know, they're really specific what they're looking for. And if you don't see that on the website, when you do get into the platform to apply by your category, you'll see even more instruction on what is required to apply. Got it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Afik. Uh, Jessica? Hi. Hi. Uh, 
So my question is, um, you're talking about seniors um, that have graduated and like do not qualify. I graduated with an associates to transfer. So I'm wondering if like that applies, like do I not like qualify for the um, internship or? So if you have your associates and you are enrolled in your next university, you are going to be enrolled, you are eligible to apply, but you have to provide proof of acceptance. So let's say you're going, you're transferring, you're, you've got your AA and you're transferring right to another college. If you're going to apply, we need to know that you've already been accepted into that school, but you would be eligible. If you are graduating, so for, for next summer, summer 2024, if you're graduating in May or June of 2024, you are still eligible as a graduating senior to do the internship in the summer. The only time you have to be still in school, not have graduated is fall and spring, because those are, you know, those are part time. And we need to know that you are going to school and still working towards your degree while you're interning. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Jessica. Stephanie? Hi, thank you so much for all of the wealth of information you've been sharing. Um, Nancy, I just wanted to know if you're not coming from a traditional age uh, student or the background, um, I'm enrolled in entertainment related courses now, but I have a whole different career track that I'm coming from. And I just wanna know how best to maybe illustrate that, you know, some of those strong, transferable skills on a resume that we need to turn in like to what degree does it need to entail um, so, or include any of that outside of entertainment sort of uh professional experience that you so, have so i think that is an interesting question because again it, it goes back to your professional statement you can talk about being in the second phase of your professional career Okay. And what you've done before, you can briefly mention, and then what you're doing now that you're back in school to become a X, Y, or Z, right? And I've had interns um, over my tenure here, I've had graduate students and even undergrads that were in their 40s that got internships with us. So it's really not about um, your age, so to speak. So don't let that be a barrier. I, The woman who was my mentor here um, who's long been retired, but when she, she had her very first internship at the age of 46, because she had gone back from another career and started over. So it's never too late. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stephanie. Joshua? Hi. Um, oh, wait, I don't know. Um, so I, you're saying that some of them are specific to Los Angeles area schools. Mm -hmm. What if we are like graduating this semester, but then going to a school that's not in Los Angeles? So if you are the, you would not be eligible for fall or spring, but you would be eligible for summer. So if you're graduating and you're transferring to another school and that school is in San Diego, then you would not, you would have to apply in the summer. Got it. And if, so like you're saying that if we we're graduating this semester, we're not eligible. You have to be like currently enrolled, not at the time of application, but at the time of the internship. Correct. For fall and spring. Yes. Okay, um, thank for, you. You're welcome. For our college television awards, though, keep in mind that even if you are graduating this year, check the eligibility period for college television awards submissions because you can be graduating and still submit to be considered for the 2024 competition, as long as your piece was made during that eligibility period. So again, if you are a producer, writer, or director on a piece that falls within any of our eight categories, you definitely want to look into this opportunity. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Joshua Terrell. Um, okay, so I have a summer internship um, that relates to what I want to apply for with the Television Academy. Um, I know this this um, application closes in May, but my my internship starts in June. Can I put that internship on my resume technically still? You're going to be doing it. Yeah, just put the dates. Okay. And in your in your professional statement, when you apply, you can say that you're really looking forward to your summer internship with so and so at so and so. 
that's fine. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Terrell. William? Hello there. So I had a question uh, as far as eligibility. So let's, I'm at a junior college right now and it's my last semester and I don't plan on transferring to another university. If I wanted to continue taking classes at that same junior college, uh, would that, would I still be eligible and how many classes would I have to take? So as long as you are enrolled, right. um, you know, I would say at least two classes. You can have graduated, but still be enrolled. And as long as you're taking a couple of classes, you should still be eligible for fall. Fantastic. Yeah, I know another interest would do that. And another question for the College Television Awards. I saw that there wasn't the uh, horror genre available there. Well, that, is that something you guys will see in the future that will open up to that or? You know, I don't know, to be really honest with you. Um, I think that I do know that a lot of students submit horror underneath drama because it really is, or comedy, you know, depending on, is it like a dark comedy? You know, what is this horror thing? Um, we definitely, I don't think his picture was up there, but for anybody on this, on this call who watches The Boys, um, Eric Kripke, who's the creator of The Boys and creator of Supernatural is also a former intern of ours. So there are definitely that, there is that crossover. Um, sometimes people might want to do some sort of a, a piece that's more relating to children's, like a children's programming piece. Um, you could find the right category for that. Um, it really, you kind of have to stretch it a little bit for horror. I don't know that we would go there because we do try to mirror our categories based off of what the Emmy Awards present. And anything horror related would come in under drama as far as I know right now, unless someday we change those rules. And as far as consecutive uh, uh, internships, like, so I primarily would want to go for directing, but you don't offer that in the fall. Mm -hmm. So would I, uh, would I decrease my chances if I tried for uh, scripted development? You know, um, would you, if, if I were to get scripted development in the fall, would that, would you say, no, you're not allowed then in, to apply for directing? Yeah. If you get an internship with us, you can only do it once. Okay. So you would have to really figure out you know are you that's why I tell students like sometimes students at their sophomore year might say I want to apply for an internship but I don't know if I'm ready maybe I should wait and that's obviously a personal choice but you know if you try early on and you don't get it you have the opportunity to keep trying um, but yes we only offer directing in the summer um, it's very hard to give a part-time directing experience so it's, that's why we we look at summer Absolutely. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just saw a question come up. Yes, yeah, summer 2023 internship is closed. We are um, locking in most of our interns right now. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, William. So um, we have Julie and Stephanie, and then we'll go ahead and cut it off there with the questions uh, with the raised hands, and I'll move to the ones in the chat. There's a few that um, haven't gone answered because um, we're cutting close to the time. But while Julia goes ahead and answers, or asks her question, I'm gonna launch the poll as well. So if you guys could please take a moment and um, answer the questions on your screen. Um, Julia, feel free to unmute and ask away. Okay, hi, yeah, right now uh, I'm doing things virtually online. I live in Santa Monica, but I have registered to take a class in Norco because there was an independent study that I'm gonna do with them uh, to write an academic paper on a, a critic a criticism. Uh, so right now I have one class lined up. I can do a second class either at Norco or I can do SMC where I've done most of my classes. Does Norco count as LA area uh, or because I'm in Santa Monica, would that count? Or should I also take a class at SMC to do the two classes to qualify? I mean, you, so where is Norco? Sorry. Good question. I just looked it up myself. It's a little, it's a little bit, it's like east. I think it's still in LA County. It might be Riverside. Um, so if, if it's in Riverside, which I think it is, Riverside County is part of greater Los Angeles. So that's fine. Okay. All right. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Julia. Stephanie? Yes. Um, just, I know you sort of touched on this earlier about those, those of us who are interested in directing um, or writing maybe going into development is probably a strategic way of trying to get into an internship position. And that you would say is the case for anyone interested in writing, directing and producing, considering development as a open opportunity. I think development really is more for writers, for aspiring writers. Um, 
possibly production uh, or producers, but not directing. I wouldn't say that for directing. Is I would there say. I would say directing would be like either a cinematography or actual straight directing. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Stephanie. And there was um, a question in the chat, uh, Nancy, about roughly if you know a percentage of, of these interns that lead to permanent job placements. Also a really good question. Um, I would say that typically in a summer, because we just went year round for the first time um, this year. And because of we are also coming out of a pandemic, it's a, it's, it's an odd time to really be able to come up with those kinds of statistics because so many people's jobs were lost during the pandemic. But I can tell you that during the summer, there's usually anywhere between, you know, if we had uh, 50 interns, maybe seven of those interns might get job offers from either directly their host company or somebody that they met through their internship. Our interns do have many opportunities to network with each other. We do professional development every Wednesday night in the summer during that intern period. Spring and fall, it's a little more difficult for us to pull things together weekly because we have such a small group of interns, but we do provide um, videos and such off of our website to be looking at. Um, but, um, I lost my train of thought. So sorry. What was what was the rest of that the question? It was about how many people get jobs. Yeah. So it's about who you know. I mean, really, it's about networking with your peers because you guys together um, working as interns, you are each other's first line of defense. Getting to know the assistants within, you know, a lot of these offices can also lead to having meetings with some more of the C-suite executives. Um, wherever you are, wherever you're interning, wherever you get an opportunity try to get five minutes with somebody and do an informational interview, find out how they got their start. Um, if you can get 20 minutes with them and grab a cup of coffee and just, you know, people are pretty generous with their time if you're genuinely interested in hearing their story. Perfect, thank you so much, Nancy. So I know we've gone a minute over and we've um, reached our limit. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for answering so many questions and sharing all your expertise. Um, this is a great program, so everyone who's on the call, please go ahead and take advantage of um, this opportunity, as well as Jose shared the link in the chat. So if you don't have access to that, I will email it to all of you who have registered, as well as a link to the recording. So you will have access to take uh, another look at this. But thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Nancy, for taking the time to speak to us. We really do appreciate it. Of course, you're welcome. And I hope we see applications from all of you. If you have questions that you can't find answered on our website, you can feel free to reach out to me directly. My email address is robinson at televisionacademy.com. But check out the website because I think we're pretty clear on, um, on giving you guys all the details. So, but again, if anything comes up, you have further questions, feel free to reach out and I hope you all have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nancy. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.